Come on, if everybody can stand up to your feet this morning. Come on, how many is glad to be in the house of God? Come on, how many is glad to be where we can worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? In some countries, they can't worship God. In some countries, they're still on lockdown. But we're free to come and worship. You know, this morning, I just feel it on my heart that I, I just want to remind God the reason that we sing. How many, you know, you have to remind yourself, why do I sing? I sing to you, Lord, because I'm happy. I sing to you, Lord, because I'm free. Your eye is on the sparrow, and that's the reason, the reason why I sing. How many know that God is the reason why we sing? Somebody could have taken us out. That car accident could have taken us out. That circumstance could have taken us out. But there is a reason why we're singing to God, amen? Come on, say this choir. Someone asked. Someone asked a question. Why do we sing? Why do we sing? When we lift. When we lift our hands to Jesus. What do we really mean? What do we really mean? Someone may be wondering. Someone may be wondering. When we sing our song. When we sing our song. At times we may. But nothing's even wrong. But nothing's even wrong. Come on, I sing because I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. That's the reason. That's the reason why I sing. Come on, say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason why I sing. I gotta say it again. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason. Back to the top. Let's see if someone asked a question. Someone asked a question. Why do we sing? Why do we sing? When we lift our hands. When we lift our hands to Jesus. What do we really mean? What do we really mean? Someone may be wondering. Someone may be wondering. When we sing our song. Sing a song. At times we may be At crying. Times we may be crying. And nothing's even wrong. And nothing's even wrong. Come on, church, I sing because I, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I sing because I'm free. His eye is on. His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason. That's, That's the reason why I sing. Come on, say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason why I sing. Come on, sing it again. Glory, high. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason Can we take it up? Oh, someone asked. Someone asked the question. Why do we sing? Why do we sing? When we lift. When we lift our hands to Jesus. What do we really mean? What do we really mean? Someone may be wondering. When we sing our song, when we sing our song, come on, at times we may, at times we may be crying, and nothing's even wrong, and nothing's even wrong. Come on, drop it, I sing because, I sing because I'm happy, I sing because, I sing because I'm free. His eye is on, His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason, that's the reason why I sing. Come on, glory. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason why. I, I gotta sing. say it again. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason. Come on, push it again. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. I give the praises. I give the praises to you. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason. Come on, let's sing that again. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I give the praise. I give the praise to you. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason why I sing. And 
when the song is over, and when the song is over, we've all said amen. We've all said amen. In your heart, just keep in on singing. Heart, just keep on singing. And the song will never and the end. Song will never end. And if somebody asks you, and if somebody asks you, was it just a show? Was it just a show? Lift your hands at me. And tell the whole world no. And when we cross that river, when we cross the river to study war no more. Study war no more. We will sing. We will sing the one whom we adore. The one who we adore. Lift your voice. I sing because I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I sing because I'm his eye is on. His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason. That's the reason why. I see Come on, can we say glory? Glory, hallelujah. I give the praises. I give the praises to you. Come on, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason. Why Come on, lift your voice again. Sing glory. Glory, hallelujah. I give the praise and I give the praise to you. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're Come the on, reason EJ, put me I out. See. We gonna say one more time. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. I give the praise and I give the praise to you. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. You're the reason why I see. You're the reason. You're the reason why. If you ever got to remind yourself, you're the reason why I see. You go through that circumstance. You're the reason why I see. When life gets hard, you're the reason why I see. You're the reason why. You're the reason why. Last one, you. You're the reason why. You're the reason why. I, I see. Come on, put your hands together. of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Take it up. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. I feel it in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, take it up. Of the Lord. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. Feel it in the atmosphere. Oh. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Everybody blow. Everybody blow the trumpet and sound the alarm. Because the Lord. Because the Lord is in the temple. Let everybody cry. Let all the people, let all the people praise Him now. The Lord is here. Come on, G, let's go up. How many want a blessing? A blessing from the Lord. A blessing from the Lord. from the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is here. The blessing of the Lord is here. Everybody blow. Everybody, Everybody blow. 
everybody from the trumpet and sound the alarm. Because the Lord, because the Lord is in the temple, let everybody bow. Let all, let all the people praise him now, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He is here. Yeah. Here we go, Titus. I can feel, I can feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm gonna get my blessing right now. I can feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm gonna get. It's my time. It's my time to God's favor. It's my time. It's my time to be blessed. Come on. It's my time. It's my time to God's favor. It's my time. It's my time to be blessed. It's my time, it's my time right here. Blessed. Oh, so step in, step in, step in, step in, step in, step in. Let them know, step in, step in, step in, step in, step in. Tell your neighbor, I'm a step in, step in, step in, step in, step in. One more time, step in, step in, step in, step in, step in, step in. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We are so excited to be here. It's all about Jesus Christ. It is about serving him with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul. So welcome. Whether you came in person, give yourselves a hand if you came to the house of the Lord. If you're joining us by Zoom, we welcome you. If you're joining us on live stream, we are glad to have you. We're going to worship him today in spirit and in truth. Don't forget to share the video. That's how you become the evangelist. We are reaching the world with the love of Jesus Christ. I always tell you, we get hundreds of comments, hundreds of responses from all over the world. They come in in foreign languages. We got to try to figure out what they're saying. So thank you for hitting that share button so that we can reach others in other countries. We're going to start with 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only 
begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you would use our lives. Thank you, God, that we are your hands in the earth realm. Thank you, God, for using us to do all that you have called us to do. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Let the word of God today be planted in our hearts, and may we walk it out in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Oh, God is good. So glad that you're here. Somebody help me put your hands together, and let's just give the, God, the Lord a praise. The presence of the Lord is here. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you. We sense your anointing. We sense your presence. We come to worship you on this day. You are bigger than any problem that we might have. You are God all by yourself. Thank you for all that you are in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap as Minister Booker Newby we come in and lead us in prayer. Praying a blessing over our children. So glad that you're here. Good kids are no accident. Every day you got to ask God for help. Somebody just shout, help. Somebody just shout, help. In Jesus' name we pray. Will you raise your hands, lift your hands. Everyone stand on your feet, please. And if you have a child here, I'm just going to ask you to put your hand on your child. And we're going to bless our children before the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, eternal God, we come to you this morning, Father God, and first of all, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Father God. Thank you for the very breath of air, Father God, that you have placed in our lungs this morning, Father God. Lord, we thank you, O oh Lord, for our children, Father God, our youth, Father God. These kids are inherited from you, Father God. They are truly a blessing, Father God. We are just stewards, Father God, down here on earth, Father God, taking care of your most precious treasure, Father God, which is your children, Father God. So, Lord, I ask that you bless each and every young man here today, young woman here today, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you cover them from the crown of their heads, Lord, to the soles of their feet in the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that you order their footsteps, Father God. I pray, oh, Father God, that you make ways for them, Father God. Any crooked roads, Father God, that you make straight for them, Father God. I pray that you open up doors for them, that you protect them, Father God. Without a seven-layer protection, oh, Father God, upon them, Father God. Protect them from the streets. Protect them from car accidents, Lord. Protect them from gang shooters. Protect them, oh, Father God, today, Father God. And, Lord, I ask that you cover their minds, Father God. Don't let them be confused in the thoughts of their mind, Lord. But lead them and guide them, Father God, and speak to each and every one of them about their destiny, Lord, about their purpose in life, Father God. And, Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. And God is good. Somebody say amen. At this time, we want to ask my wife to come for all the graduates. We've got a wonderful group of young people that have graduated. And then we are just so excited that God is moving them on to the next level. We were so surprised this year. So many young men graduated that it is amazing. Amen. Uh, many of them could not be here today because they've already left for school or they're already working. But we do want to recognize them. Um, our first one that is not here today, Michael Jackson who is the son of Stacy Alexander, Reggie and Stacy Alexander. Yes. He will attend Sterling College this fall on a basketball scholarship. Yes. Let's thank God for him. And then we have Arden Walker, who is the son of Candace and Art Walker. Yes. And he is going to fight, let's see, Missouri. University of Missouri on, on a football a scholarship. Football scholarship. We also have Ryan Williams. Ryan is a young lady who, she wrote us the nicest email. She said, yes. this coming fall, I will be attending Baylor University for social work yes. to become a medical social worker. She got half of her tuition paid, and she's currently working on getting a graduate assistantship to help cover the rest. Yes. And this is how much we impact our kids. She said, I want to thank God and also you, Pastor, because Emmanuel has been a true blessing to me. I have been you all since I was a little girl at Rachel, Rachel B. No. B. No. We remember Rachel B. Yes. No. She said, I had actually moved to Houston, but I have still been following and watching on the live stream. So thank God for all you do. So our kids are impacted yes, by the are. work that we're doing. And then we have 
Evan Harris Madden, the son of Elijah and Katrina Fleeks, and he is heading to college this fall. So we are celebrating each and every one of them. Yes. And then Marcus McElroy, BJ's son, graduated with his undergraduate degree in psychology. Yes. With a concentration in health and clinical counseling. From Colorado and State. He is getting ready to go to graduate school. So God is doing a great work, but we do have. I think a couple who are present here today, I'm going to ask Quentin Cooper to come on down. Is he here? Come Yay, on down, Quentin. And Jason Vaughn, would you come on down? Let's put our Jason. hands together for these young people. One more of our graduates who was going to come today, but he's working. He is a worker bee, is Miles Newbins. Yay, he graduated. Miles with recognition in business and academic achievements. He had college credits before he graduated from high school. Yes, he did. So he's going on to Colorado Mesa State University and is one of our up and coming wonderful young people. So we have these two graduates and I, there might be one more. Is there one more There's graduate? There's a special young There's lady. a special one more graduate? Who's that? You gonna call her up? Eliza, Eliza. Simpkins. <laughs> Yay, she, graduated she graduated from, from kindergarten to first grade, and she is thrilled about it. Lies, why don't you stand right over here? Amen. We just want you to know that when we pray over our children, that God blesses them. Most of these are young men that are going to college. They're not in gangs. They're not in prison. They are going to college to get an education. And so as we continue to pray over our children, God hears and answers our prayer. We're going to start the process of bringing our kids back down to the altar in a few weeks. Uh, but we want you to know that when we pray and ask God to bless them, he blesses them. You know, the, all those young men names that we just call, you know, there are a lot of them are already at campus. Uh, they're already getting uh, getting prepared to have success. So thank you for praying over our sons. Thank you for praying over our daughters. Thank you for joining with us when we pray over them. God is going to bless them, and they are going to do great as they go forward in, in the days ahead. Somebody say amen. amen. And uh, you have a gift for each one of them, and, uh, and uh, we want to give them the right book because they got some money in it. And, uh, and so, but we want to just say thank you for praying for all of our children, and let's continue to pray for them that those are off at college, you know, that we pray that God will bless them. Somebody say amen. Our wonderful son, Arden, that's already at the University of Missouri. His parents are here this morning. Hey, y'all. You know, uh, you know we, we pray that he have favor. Pray that God will protect them, protect his health. Somebody say amen. And so I just want to say thank you. I'm just glad to be a part of a team that loves the Lord. In my, as I get older, I just want to serve the Lord. I have no agenda to be popular. I just want to serve the Lord. I want to worship him. I want to praise him and watch him work in the lives of our children. Somebody say amen. Amen. So stretch your hand toward these wonderful, wonderful little people and wonderful lives. We are so proud of you in the name of Jesus. And so we're anoint her with oil in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We anoint this young man in the name of Jesus. And we just thank the Lord for blessing his life. We we'll anoint you, son of destiny. Go forward and be all that God called you to be. So, Father, we pray your blessings over each one of our sons. We release them to be the best. We release them to tap into the genius that's in their lives. We release them to tap into the genius that's in their mind. That they go far, further they can ever imagine or think. And cover them by the blood. Thank you for Eliza. As she go down through the years in school, we ask for favor. Somebody just shout, favor. favor. Give her favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for blessing all of our children. And we ask your favor to rest upon their lives. All those young men that are already at school, we ask you to bless them. We ask you to help them. We ask you to lead them and guide them and protect them. We cover them by the blood. Somebody just holler the blood. The blood over each one of them on campus, on those that are at work. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his wonderful blessings. God bless you guys. Congratulations, man. Go to, go to school. Don't be no fool. Make some money so you can keep your honey. Love your life. 
Well, this is a special day. We're starting announcements again today. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so you can be seated. We're so excited to be getting back to some kind of normalcy, but we would just want to let you know what's going on. You've probably been getting it by email, but it's better in person, right? So next Saturday is Man Up. If you haven't been involved in Man Up, it has been tremendous. If you need the Zoom link, I think they're still going to do it by Zoom this month. Uh, make sure you send us an email. We'll make sure that you get the link. They start at 8 a.m. Is that correct? Start at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Powerful, powerful topics for helping men grow in every area of their lives. Tomorrow morning for the tough ones, 5.30 a.m. Men's Bible study. Also on the Zoom link. So make sure we get an email so that we can send you that Zoom link. Powerful, growing in God, all of the men. So 5.30 a.m. And then here's the big one. Next Sunday, Youth and Children's Ministry. Woo! These teams have been just chomping at the bit, just can't wait to get started. They're so excited, so we want you to make sure you bring your young people. What will happen is they'll come into service like normal, and then we'll pray over them, and then we'll dismiss them to their services. So we're excited about you know, getting the word back in their lives, you know, from, from the teams and doing things so that they know, know the love of God. So next Sunday, make sure you mark your calendars, put it in your phones. We're going to start back our youth and children's services. Do we have any first-time guests today? I haven't said that in probably 15 months. Do we have any first-time guests today? If you are a first-time guest, would you raise your hand? We want to welcome you. If we're not, we want to invite somebody, right? You know, this is a day and age when people need the Lord. If you have more than a two or three minute conversation with somebody, you know that they need God. So invite them to the house of the Lord where they can grow in their faith and learn how to serve the Lord in their lives. Um, if we have membership cards, if you're not a member and you want to become a member, please take a card. We will be starting membership soon. We will reach out and contact you. Fill the card out, give it back to an usher, and we will be in contact with you. Well, I'm so excited to be here today. God bless you. Welcome our pastor back, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good this morning. Raise your hands and let's just ask the Lord for help. How many of you got an area of your life where you need God's help? If that's you, just stand on your feet. If you got an area of your life where you need God's help, you need God's supernatural help, then set your elbow all the way up and let's ask our Father for help. Father, we ask you for help this morning. In every area of our lives, in our families, in our children's lives, we ask for help in every area on our job, in situations in our lives. We need your help. David said, I look to the hill with cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. We decree and we declare you are the God that helps us. So help us today. We receive it by faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, help! Give the Lord a hand clap for the choirs they minister to us. Hey. Come on, put your hands together. Ray! 
Jesus. Because he raised me. I know. I know he works. Because it saved me. Because he saved me. I know. I know he works. Because it filled me. Because it filled me. I know. I know he works. Because it healed me. Because it healed me. It will never. It will never. Yeah. 
out the blood still works take your bible this morning stand on your feet this morning so glad that you're here god is a good god the blood still works the old blood of jesus the blood of jesus still works somebody say amen Take your Bible and go with me to Hebrews this morning. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Minister Jordan. Thank you uh, for worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness and praising his holy and righteous name. Somebody say amen. What you're going through, you need God's help. Somebody say help. Don't try to do it by yourself. You need God's help. Hebrews chapter 4. I want to ask my wife if, if she'll read for me this morning. So glad that you're here. God loves you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. God is a good God and he loves you. Please read. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Yes. And sharper than any two edged sword. Yes. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner, discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes, the word of God. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you for the word of God today. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts may it be acceptable in your sight on this day. Thank you for all your help. Somebody just holler with me. Help! Thank you for all your help. May the word of God be the panacea that we need in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. So glad that you're here. So glad that you're online. Uh, please share the video and just know God is a good God. He loves you. The word of God is a bomb into our lives that bring healing into our lives and lifts us out of a broken heart. The word of God is the seed of God's word. And when we plant it in the soil of our heart, it will explode because we are nothing but dirt. From dust mankind has come, and from dust mankind shall return. So when we plant the word of God in our hearts, in our lives, and in our minds, it will grow, it will explode, and our lives will get better. Somebody say better. Therefore, we must meditate on the word. We must read the word. We must take it every day because it's a medicine. The word of God brings healing into our life. It will regulate our thinking, regulate our decision making, and it will help us to be better. Somebody just say better. Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds out out of the mouth of God. My job as a pastor is not to tell you a story, not to tell you a joke. My job as a pastor is to tell you what the Bible says, to get the word in your life. Somebody say amen. I am not I'm on the edge of some prophetic revelation trying to find a new theology or a new dogma. I, my job is to tell you what the Bible says so that you can live your life by faith. Somebody say faith. So that you can live your life and be strong and of a good courage. Somebody say amen. The word of God is the anchor in our lives. It will hold your life together. It will hold your life together during difficult times. It, the word of God will keep your mind intact. It will keep you with a regulated mind. The word of God will help you not to do and go crazy. Somebody say amen. So in this season, coming out of this COVID virus, we need to regulate and anchor our lives, anchor our minds, anchor everything that we have that we want God to do in our lives. Somebody say, anchor your life. Somebody say, anchor your life. All across the nation, false religions are popping up. All across the nation, uh, Islam and New Age and different, re different religions are starting to surface in a greater way. Liberation theology is starting to surface in a, in a greater way. Somebody say amen. The worship of their own God. I just stay home and worship the kitchen table. I saw that online. You know, but you have to know that there is nothing like the word of God. Somebody say amen. All across the nation, people are losing. They're getting involved in, in, in uh, the gospel of inclusion, if you will. But my Bible says that Jesus is the only way, the truth 
and the life. So we must anchor our lives in the word. Somebody say, get in the word. We must anchor our lives in the word so that we can have favor and be blessed and we can do all that God has called us to do. You will see a great falling away in the days ahead among Christian and people that you know. You know, but that doesn't, that doesn't, shouldn't bother you. You are called by God to walk with the Lord all the days of the, your life. Don't worry about what other people do. You stay the course. Look at somebody, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you stay the course. People are falling away because they are disconnected. And people are falling away because they have no word in their lives. We were designed for the word of God to work in our lives. People are falling away because they're not praying and not putting God first. But you got to stay anchored. Somebody say, stay anchored. Somebody say, stay anchored. Don't let society, don't let culture, don't let theology, don't let anybody separate you from his death, his barrier, and his resurrection. You need the word in your life. Every week I get challenged in this area of my life. I have the opportunity to sit down and talk to Bill McCartney every week, every Thursday at 10 o'clock. And one of the things he asked me is, Pastor, are you getting them in the word? He said, if you're not getting them in the word, you're throwing a no-hitter. He said, it ain't about how good you are. It's about people need the word. Somebody say amen. So I know my job is to get you in the word so that you can go forward in your life. Somebody say amen. Coming out of this pandemic, we got to stay anchored. Somebody say, stay anchored. Somebody say, stay anchored. People are going to drift away. They're going to go and they're going to party. They're going to go to Vegas. They're going to do all kinds of things. But I have made it up in my mind. The Lord allow me to live another day. I'm going to find my way to God's house. I'm going to find my way to the church. Somebody say, man, when I went on vacation a couple of weeks ago, I found my way to a little church. Sat in the back and then told him, don't know, let nobody know I'm a pastor. I'm just here as a child of the Lord. Somebody say, man. So you got to know what matters in life. You got to know what matters in life. The word of God matters in your life. My, my goal is to get you in the word. It's the only thing that's going to last. It's the only thing that's going to stabilize your family. It's the only thing that's going to help you in your finances. It's the only thing that's going to help you in your life. The word of God. Anchor your life in the word. There, the anointing flows out of that. The anointing of God that helps men and help women to have success comes out of the word of God when the seed of that word hits the soil of your heart then your life change then you move into a new season a new dimension a new realm with the Lord walking with the Lord somebody say amen and we must know what Jesus said we must not be uh, unsure we must know what Jesus said. Take your Bible and go with me to Matthew. Matthew chapter uh, number five. Matthew chapter number five. Matthew chapter number five. You know, we must know what Jesus said. Somebody say amen. Uh, on the, uh, there on the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew five, six, and seven. We got to know what Jesus said. During this day, a lot of people were saying a lot of things. So Jesus in this sermon corrected a lot of that. I don't have time to go over everything that he said, but I want to just highlight a few things that he said in Matthew chapter number five. Matthew chapter five, verse number 18. He said, for I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall no wise pass from the law, from the word, till it all be fulfilled. The key thing there is I say unto you. Don't worry about what they said. I'm telling you what I say. Somebody say amen. And he kept, up, he kept it up, going down to verse number 20. For I say unto you. Don't worry about what other people have been saying. Jesus said, for I say unto you. Go down, I don't have time to go over each one of them. But number three, go down to verse 22. Again, he said, you have heard it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of, the, of judgment. But then in verse 22, he said what? But I say unto you, see, we got to know everything that Jesus said. I got, I'm, I got to hurry. I got 14s of I say to get through. Go down to verse number 26. He said again, I say unto you, 
Somebody say amen. Go to verse number 28. He said, but I say unto you. See, we got to know what Jesus is saying in these last days. Somebody, don't worry about what the politicians are saying. Don't worry about what the, what the other people are saying. Don't worry about what the doctors are saying. Don't worry about what the lawyers are saying. What is Jesus saying? Number six, go down to verse 32, 532. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. Somebody say he was talking about family and, and divorce there. Somebody say amen. Go down to verse 34. Go to verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven nor for it is God's throne. Jesus did not go down to verse 39. Underline these in your Bible. He says, but I say unto you. See, we got to know what Jesus is saying in this hour. Somebody say amen. You got to know what Jesus is saying. Go down, that's, that's number eight. Now go down to verse, uh, verse number uh, 44. That's number nine, the ninth time in the Sermon on the Mount. In these three chapters, 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, he said, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that, 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 that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus was telling them how to live. The Bible tells you how to live, how to keep your life together. That's number nine. That's the ninth time. Now, let, let's go to uh, number 10. Number 10. Uh, it's uh, chapter 6, and it's verse number 2. He, he says, For I say unto you that you have your reward when you give your money so people can see you and know what you give. He said, You have your reward. You get no reward from me. But I say unto you, go down to verse number, uh, number 5 of that chapter 6. But I, see, we got to know what the Bible says. In this hour, people are saying everything. You can do this. You can do that. You got to find out what Jesus is saying about it. But I say unto you, but I say unto you, you have your reward. And then go down now. Let's find that's, that's, that's the 11th time that he said uh, that I said. And let's go to the 12th time. Moreover, when you fast, be not as a hypocrite or as a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. What did he say? Verily what? I say unto you, they have their what? Get in your Bible. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of God is going to stand forever. We need to know what Jesus is saying. Somebody say amen. amen. Then that, that was number 12. Let's go to number 13. The 13th time in those three chapters that he said, but I say unto you. That's verse, that's verse number 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink for, for your body or what you shall put on. He said, I say unto you, behold the fowls of the air. God's going to take care of you. Is that what he said? Verse 26, he said, behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly father, what? Feedeth them. See, we got to know that Jesus said, God's going to take care of us. Somebody say, God's going to take care of me. Somebody say, God's going to take care of me. One more time, God's going to take care of us. God's going to see you. That's what Jesus said. If Jesus said, God's going to help you with your bill, he's going to help you. If Jesus said, God's going to give you food, he's going to give you food. And the last time, in that Sermon on the Mount, the 14th time, Jesus said, I say unto you, that even Solomon, all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these lilies of the field. He says, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall, not, shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Somebody said, Jesus said, I'm going to be all right. Come on, say it again. Jesus said, I'm going to be all right. Somebody said, Jesus said, I'm going to be all right. Jesus said, everything's going to be all right. Don't worry about the devil. He's going to roar at your door. Don't worry about demonic forces. They're going to do everything they can to blow up your cell phone with bad texts. Don't worry about it. Anchor your life on the word of God. Because the grass wither. The flower is going to fade, the Bible says. 
But the word of God is going to stand forever. Somebody say amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. It says all scripture is given, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness and how to live. Don't worry about what other people do. Live by the word. Get your Bible out and read your Bible. Get your Bible out and meditate on the word. Over and what? Over and what? Over again. Let's not be ignorant Christians in these last days. Let's not be people that doesn't know where to find John 3.16 at in the Bible. Let's not be people that does not know the 23rd Psalm. Committed to memory. Because in the days ahead, you are going to need the word to move your life forward. Somebody say forward. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think and meditate on these things. The Word of God helps us to get a hold of our thought life. It helps you to think right. People that have mental problems, they don't meditate on the Word. If you would just meditate, it helps us with our thinking. The Word of God helps us with our decision making. The Word of God helps us in our daily discretion. The Word of God helps us to root out negative things that the enemy plant in our minds. The Word of God causes us to think right. Somebody say, think right. People are going crazy coming out of this COVID, it has messed a lot of people up. We don't want to talk about it, but it's true. It has messed a lot of people up. But you got to anchor your life in the word of the Lord. Lord, I need your help. Somebody just shout, help! Mental illness is at an all-time high because we have left the medicine. The word is a medicine. Somebody say Amen. If you're thinking wrong, you're not reading right. Somebody say amen. If you're thinking wrong, you're not reading right. We got to get in the word. Somebody say meditate on the word. Somebody say meditate on the word. People are going crazy. Jesus said in Mark 12 and 30, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. Love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. This, Jesus said, is the first commandment. Isaiah 55, 11 tells us, So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sit it. The word of God works. Somebody say amen. amen. We must submit to the authority of the word. We must submit to the authority of the word. That man should not live by bread alone. But by every word. That proceeds out of the mouth of God. It will regulate your thinking. It'll regulate your right chemistry to your left chemistry. It'll regulate your, your right chemistry, your left chemistry, and your brain stem chemistry. It'll regulate it. The Word of God strengthens us day by day, week by week, year by year. Isaiah 40 and 8 says, The grass wither, the flower will fade, but the Word of God will stand forever. Somebody say Amen. I'm honored that you will let me as a pastor tell you what the Bible says. A lot of pastors can't preach what the Bible says. Somebody say amen. They can't preach. They need the money. They, 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 and so they have to just preach whatever the, 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 the elders or the trustees tell them. Somebody say amen. But as long as we hold the microphone at Emmanuel Christian Center, we're going to tell you what the Bible says. Somebody say amen. We're going to tell you the Bible said give the whole tithe. 
I know people back up on that. We're going to tell you the Bible says stay with your family. I know people back up on that. We're going to tell you the Bible says he made a male and female. I know people back up on that. We're going to tell you the Bible said marriage is honorable and don't shack up. I know people back up on me on that. Somebody say amen. But we need the word of the Lord in our lives. You see people's lives are running off the ramp. They are running off track. They have no word in their life. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's a medicine. Somebody say, give me my medicine. I'm your doctor this morning. I, I got a big spoon. I'm going to give you your medicine. Somebody say, give me my medicine. Open up big and wide. Let me put it all in there. Somebody say, take your medicine. You'll feel better. You'll last longer. You'll go further in life. And you'll be anointed. And you'll be blessed. Raising our kids, they didn't want to take that medicine, especially that cod liver oil. Anybody remember the cod liver oil? Woo! It works. Open up. Why? They didn't want to take it. The Word of God is a medicine to your life. But the question, Pastor, is how the Word of God impacts my thinking. How does the Word of God impact your thinking? The Word of God is a medicine. I want to give you four ways that the Word of God impacts your thinking. People in this season, church, are losing their minds. And if you are walking in sanity, they'll call you crazy. Because we are so used to the things that are wrong. We're so used to people living reckless lives. We're so used to the lies that people tell. We're so used to hearing it wrong. The more you hear a lie, the more you'll believe it. The more you hear a lie, the more you'll believe it. But the word of God is truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Somebody raise your hand and say, I am blessed. Four ways. I got more than four, but I only have time for four. Four ways. That the word of God impacts your thinking. Number one, the word of God gives light to a darkened mind. If you watch crazy movies all the time, it will darken your mind. That's why I don't watch scary movies. I don't watch scary commercials. I have my wife turn it. When they, do, when they start advertising in a few months, uh, Freddy Krueger, Jason the Chainsaw Man, all the crazy stuff. Y'all see them? When you start advertising, I, start, I said, turn it. Somebody say amen. It darkens your mind. And Ephesians 4, 8, 4, 17 said, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding, what? Darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Man, I can stay right there on that one scripture for the rest of the month. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. If we dealt with the vanity of the minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from God through ignorance, number three. And then if we dealt with the blindness, or if we dealt with those four things, we could do a sermon on each one because our society it's going blind. Raise your hand with me, everybody. Say, Lord. Come on, say with me. Say, Lord. Open my understanding that I might comprehend, that I might understand by the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. The word of God brings revelation. The word of God brings illumination into our, our lives. The word of God brings insight. It brings perception. It brings divine interpretation. It, 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 it helps you to divinely align your thinking with God. The word keeps you from hurting yourself. It keeps you from hurting your loved ones. It keeps you from hurting your family. Somebody say amen. It helps us to live a sound mind. Somebody say a sound mind. 
Every day I pray, Lord, keep my mind. One thing I want to be able to do when I get old, I want to be able to recognize my grandkids. I want to be able to hug them and know them by name. Somebody say amen. I want to be able to know my boys. Somebody say amen. So every day you got to ask the Lord. I say, Lord, keep my mind. As you get older, things slip, leak. Somebody say amen. But you got to ask the Lord to keep your mind. Who wants to be out of it when you are old? Somebody say amen. Nobody. We want our minds to be alive and sharp. Somebody say amen. Raise your hand. Let's pray it together. On live stream, everybody say, Lord, keep my mind. One more time. Everybody say, Lord, keep my mind. In Jesus' name I pray. The word of God will stabilize your thinking. It will stabilize your thinking in a way that you can make the right decision. Young lady, you are too pretty to be bullied by a guy that just gives you a hard time. Young lady, you are too beautiful to be bullied by some guy that don't know his left foot from his right foot. Young man, you are too smart and work too hard to be bullied by a girl, a diva girl. You need a girl that loves the Lord. You need a girl that honors the word of God. Somebody say amen. You need a girl that's able to uh, tell you what, the, what Jesus said. Young lady, you, you need to get with a man that, that will at least is willing to try and adjust his life. To love God. Somebody say amen. Because if he don't love God, he is incapable of loving you. The love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. If a man loves God, he can love you. I don't care how fine you are. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how long your eyelashes. If he don't love God, it's not in him to love you. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We need the Lord. Somebody say, Lord, I need your help. The word of God, when it comes in our lives, it will give us light to a darkened mind. Somebody say amen. How can a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed to the word of God. The way I kept my life on track when I was in college is I read my Bible. Because there at the University of Tulsa, we had some real parties. Lord have mercy. Fraternity Row was always jumping. Down in town was always, we were right near downtown, it was always jumping. But you, I had to keep my mind straight. Somebody say amen. And you have to know, when, you are, when you're athletes, girls are a plenty. I'm going to leave that alone. For our young boys that are going to college, Lord, help them. In fact, let's just pray for them, all of them. Whether you are at basketball, football, hockey, golf, girls like athletes. Raise your hands with this preacher. I know what I'm talking about. I can stay right here. The blood. Somebody say the blood. Everybody say, Lord, save our sons from sexual promiscuity. In Jesus' name, I pray. But if you don't tell them what the Bible says, they will drift off. If you don't tell your girl what the Bible says about her, the glory of a woman is a hair. Let your hair grow. Don't be cutting it off. Oh, let me leave that alone. Number two, I got to get back into the Bible. I'll start melting now. Somebody say amen. Soon as some women gets ready, let's cut it all off. The Bible, the Bible says the glory of a woman is her hair. Why do you think all the cheerleaders are shaking their hair? They may not know what the Bible says, but they know there's some energy behind it. Somebody say amen. Number two, number two, how does the word of God impact our thinking? It, the word of God gives light to a darkened mind. Number two, the word of God helps us to think right. Somebody say, think right. Somebody say, think right. Somebody say, think right. A lot of people are thinking wrong. They've been watching movies. Do you know when you watch movies, they cause you to think differently? You, gotta, you, know, you can't be watching certain movies. 
they, they, they'll make you mad. How many of you ever watched a movie and it made you mad? Because they impact your thinking. Some things you cannot watch. Somebody say amen. But the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.13, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Some young men have moved all across country to be with the diva. Get there and realize it's not what I thought. Some, I know the young lady drove all the cross country to meet a guy and it wasn't near what she thought it was. Somebody say amen. amen. We got to think right. Somebody say think right. Amen. Lady, if he love you, let him come to you. Men are hunters. Men are chasers. They go after. They, they, they love the chase. And see, that's why when you get married, you got to break the chase. You got to break the chase. If a man doesn't break the chase, that's why men cheat. You want to know why men cheat? Because they haven't broke the chase. The chase is powerful. The chase is eu euphoric. The chase is dominating. It's all about the chase. Somebody say amen. Some men go fishing not because they love fish. They, they love this to chase. I want to reel him in. Somebody say amen. Some men go hunting. Pick up that big gun and go hunting. Go all across country to hunt. It's not that they're going to eat the meat. It's to chase. Somebody say amen. You got to think right. If you watch some movies by Tyler Perry, you get mad. You look at your wife and say, are you doing that? You look at your husband and say, what's wrong with you? Am I right about it? You got you to gotta know, know how to think right. Somebody say, think right. The word of God does wonders in our mind. It transforms us. It purifies us. It renews us. It lightens our faith. It lightens our path. And it feeds the fire of God in our hearts. And it stirs up the anointing of God that's upon your life. The word of God brings truth to a dark life. Therefore, we got to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to think right. When you get into, when you're going through a difficult time, get your Bible out. Say, Lord, help me to think right. Help me to think right. I see it different from them. Help me to think right. Somebody say amen. Because the Bible said the words are lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It lines up your thinking. It lines up your mind. It lines up your life. The word of God is so needed in this hour. Somebody say amen. It, it brings revelation knowledge. Gives you divine insight. Helps you to divinely align with your life and with God. The word of God. How does the word of God impact our thinking? Number one, the word of God will help us. Gives light to a darkened mind. You, know, you don't want your mind to go to a dark, negative place. And number two, it helps us to think right. Somebody say, think right. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you thinking right? Oh, look at me now and say, neighbor, are you thinking right? A lot of people, they've been locked up in the house, man. They, are, they, 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 they got a tick. They want to go somewhere. They, they get they get a, they get in a, they, they, they get in the, in the in the airport and they just start walking, walk from one gate to the next gate. They're walking because they've been locked up. Somebody say, "Man, the word of God helps you to think." Like I gotta hurry, I'm, I gotta hurry. Number three, the word of God keeps us from a sinful lifestyle. That's not; those are not popular words in our culture. A sinful lifestyle. Because some people believe that there's no sin. Somebody say amen. But my Bible says that in sin did my mother conceive me. You have a need for repentance. You have a need for God's blessing. You have a need for God to wash you thoroughly. Men, we have a need for God to wash our minds. Ladies, you want to help your husband? Pray over his mind. Every man's got crazy stuff going on in their head. Men, you got to think what you're thinking about. You got to think about what you're thinking about. And you got to tell yourself, I can't think that. 
Somebody say, I can't think that. Raise your hand, everybody. Let's pray over our minds. Everybody say with me. Say, Lord, keep my mind. Say it again. Say, Lord, keep my mind. In Jesus' name, I pray. The word of God will help you and keep you from a sinful mind. What happens to those that fail to read the Bible and pray faithfully? They regress. They lose spiritual strength. They lose their desire for God. Not only that, they lose spiritual ground. Somebody say amen. They lose the desire to draw near to the Lord. And they lose the joy of life. And they lose the joy of praising the Lord. And then they end up depressed. What's wrong with you? I just don't feel right. What's hurting? Nothing's hurting. It's just, I just don't feel right. But get in your Bible. How can a young man keep his way pure? Taking heed to the word of God. Set your mind on things above. People are losing their minds. And we must stay sane in these last and evil days. Somebody say, stay sane. Somebody say, stay sane. If your boss asks you to do something, do it. Somebody say, amen. Somebody say, amen. You, 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 have to, you have to use wisdom. Somebody say, wisdom. Especially if it goes with your job. Somebody say, amen. And I close with number four. How does the word of God? helps us and impacts our thinking. Number one, it gets us out of a darkened, negative mind. When you watch some movies, I think, how does some people think about this kind of stuff? How does Hollywood think about this dark stuff? I mean, where do they go to get these thoughts from? They go nowhere. They just live a normal life without the word of God in their mind. And your mind will turn evil by itself. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, it helps us to think right. Number three, it keeps us from a sinful lifestyle. Young lady, you are too pretty to be bombarded by some guy that means you're no good. Just want to just come in and take your best years. Oh, I ain't got no help in here. Young lady, you are too smart for some guy that just want to take advantage of you. No. You're better off. You and the word and the Lord. And then as you walk with the Lord and God knows your heart is for him, then he'll have some guys, some real guys blowing you up. Oh, I ain't got no help in here. Because some people are not willing to wait for the real guys to show up. The devil always send counterfeits first. Single lady, the devil always send you counterfeits. And if you bite on the counterfeit, you'll be just, you'll, you'll be counterfeit. But then when the real guy show up, he's not going to look like you want him to look. Oh, I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to stay right here. Y'all be patient with me. I feel it by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stay right here. When the real guy show up, I don't, he got a big belly. He's a little short guy. His head looks funny. But guess what? He's the real deal. Somebody said the real deal. And because you were looking for the guy you've been watching on the movies, the buff guy, who ain't real, he's full of steroids, then you can't handle a real guy. Somebody say amen. You want a guy with calves this big. And the guy God sent you got calves this big. Rooster legs. Oh, somebody say, help. I'm trying to help somebody. We got to get in the word. Anchor our lives. Anchor our families. Anchor our children. And live victorious. Number four, I close with number four. How does the word of God impact our lives? Get your Bible out. Get our grandmother's Bible. The reason why our grandma lived a good life, she was old, but she would live a good life. Because she lived by the word. Grandma lived by the word. She had her big old Bible on the coffee table. When you walk through the door, that's the first thing you saw in her house. Somebody say amen. 
Number four, the word of God will keep you out of a spiritual famine. The Bible says in Amos 8, 11, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I'll send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. Somebody say amen. And it says, that next verse, it said, They shall run to and fro, looking for the word of the Lord. See, if you got a pastor that'll tell you the word, you ought to celebrate. I ain't got no help in here. I'm not trying to help myself. I'm trying to help you to lie, lie, divinely alive. If you got a pastor that'll tell you the word and not tell you a joke and a story, then you ought to be happy. You ought to appreciate it. Because my job is to tell you what the Bible said. You need to know what the Bible said. Your family is in trouble. Your son need help. Your daughter need no help. You need financial blessing. And my Bible tells me the word of God makes all the difference. Long as I live, I'm going to find my way to the word. Look at the neighbors and neighbor. Find your way in the word. Say it again. Find your way in the word. We must submit to the authority of the word of God. You must submit to the authority of the word of God. The word of God will awaken your soul. Stir up the anointing in your life. Sustain your thinking. And you'll be the last lady standing. Somebody say amen. You'll be the last man standing. Why? Because the word of God has grown up in my life. So I'll be the last one standing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let the word of God grow up in your life. Say it again. Say, turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, let the word of God grow up in your life. And you'll be the last one standing. You'll be the last one standing, believing and declaring, the Lord is my help. Somebody say help. The word will connect you to God. The word will sustain your thinking. And the word will equip you for demonic battles. One thing the devil don't want Christians to do is to memorize the word. One thing the devil does not want Christians to do is to memorize the word. That's what defeated him on the mountain with Jesus. Jesus said, when he came to him, he said, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Every time the enemy came against Jesus, he went to the word. He went to the word, and he began to hit him with the word. Somebody say, hit him. See, if you don't hit him with the word, he will run your life. Then he came to the Jesus again and said, hey, Jesus, look at all these kingdoms of the world. And I give them all to you if you fall down and worship me. That's the ultimate goal of the enemy is to get you to worship him. Through evil movies, through an evil lifestyle. But Jesus said, hey, Mr. Devil. It is written, Matthew 4, 7, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The devil wasn't through with him. He said, hey, Mr. Jesus, if you be the son of God, whole another sermon. The first thing the enemy said to him is, if you be the son of God, attacking his identity. See, the devil will always attack your identity. Who do you think you are? But you got to know who you are. Somebody say, I know who I am. Say it again, I know who I am. He said, if you be the son of God, get thee down. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. He said, cast yourself down. The angels will take care of you. See, you got to know what the Bible says. And you got to memorize scripture. So that you can fight off the devil. Somebody say amen. The word of God will save your life. That's what's gotten me through life. The word of God. That's what's gotten me through difficult times in my life. The word of God. 
That's what's gotten us through difficult pain that came our way. The word of God. Uh, that's what got us through the difficulties when my son Joe went through a challenge with a stroke. We put the word up around the hospital room. The doctors came in. They were so amazed at, at looking at the Bible. Some of them probably had never seen the Bible. But I had a Bible scripture on every word wall. It was the word of God that brought us out. If I could tell you anything today, you got to pray the word. You got to declare the word. You got to speak the word. You got to proclaim the word. And then you got to connect it with the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood. When you connect the word with the blood, you have a real weapon. You come too far to fail. You come too far to quit. You come too far to turn around. You come too far to let the devil win. Somebody say, I am blessed. And you got to declare, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Make me to lie down in green pastures. Leading me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Lead me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Somebody say, I am blessed and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The blood. Somebody say, the blood. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you for the word. The grass wither. The flower fades. But the word of God is going to stand forever in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Stand up on your feet this morning. It's the word of God that makes all the difference in your life. Get in your Bible. Let's not be ignorant Christians that don't know where to find Isaiah 40 and 8. And don't know what it says. Let's not be Christians that are illiterate, that don't know where to find the Ten Commandments in Exodus. Let's not be Christians that don't know where to find the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Let's not be Christians that don't know where to find that husband and wives that are live together in 1 Peter 3 and 7. Let's not be Christians that don't know where to find when God said, I'll bless you and your children. Psalms 115 and verse 12. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your what? Children. That's the word you can stand on for your son. That's the word you can stand on for your daughter. The Lord shall increase you more and what? More. You and your what? Children. You got to know where to find it. Put it around your house. And then God will bless you. Raise your hands right where you are. Father, I've given them the word you put on my heart. That your word lift us in our mind and it clears us out. So I pray today that you will bless us. That you help us to live the abundant life in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to get in the word. Help us to know what the word says about our lives. Help your people in the name of Jesus. Help them to know that they don't have to put up with a mean boss. That the word says the Lord shall increase you. That I have, Deuteronomy 8.18, I have given you the power to get wealth. That you will give them a better job. 
So God, we thank you for the word of God today. Let the word of God. Let the word of God. Let the word of God be present in our church. From every minister, from every elder, from every pastor, let the word of God be dominant in their lives. Don't let them be silent. Don't let them be silent when it comes to the word. Let them pray the word. Let us sing the word. Let us meditate on the word. And let us worship you in the beauty of holiness. And our hearts will always say to you, yes. Yes. Our hearts will always say yes to the word. Yes to the word of the Lord. No to demonic forces that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Lord, bless our church. Bless our church. Bless every man, every woman, and may the word of God become alive in their hearts. Help us to read the word, memorize the word, meditate on the word in the name of Jesus. Help us to be people of the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness and all of his mercy in your life? God is a good God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I'll have you out of here in a few minutes, but we got to do our salvation. Just know that thank you for your family members. I still pray for them. I still have their list right here uh, with me in my Bible, and I still pray for them because nothing is like loved ones when they get saved. You got to pray for them, and you got to ask God to help them. Somebody say, help. You got to ask God to bless them. So we pray for them, and we ask God to help them every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. Today, if, but if you got a loved one that you need the Lord to touch their lives, would you just stand with me at this moment? We're just going to ask the Lord to touch their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we got loved ones that are not saved. Save them by your power. Somebody say, save them! In the name of Jesus. Today we declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Raise your hand with me and everybody say it with me. Everybody say, Lord... I declare your blessings over my life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord. There's no other name whereby men must be saved but by the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord for all your help everybody say Lord we repent for all of our sin blot out all of our transgression thank you for all your help save them somebody say save them come on say it again save them save our loved ones save the lost in Jesus name we pray may they spend eternity with you all the days of their lives in jesus name i pray somebody say amen bless you you may be seated in the house of the lord god is a good god and he loves you again we want to take a minute i want to ask my wife if she'll come we just want to take a minute and just say thank you some of you have been so faithful and so diligent in coming and giving to the work of the lord we just so appreciate you and uh and we just want to say thank you you know uh it's it's always important to say thank you first to god but then also to say thank you to you for your faithfulness. God's going to bless you. You take care of God's house. You watch he take care of your house. You open your hand to God. He opens his hand to you. We just love the fact that you stand on your tithing covenant. There's so many times, I don't know about you, just raise your hand if you've had to pull this out and just stand on it for situations in your life and things that have occurred. Just standing on the tithing covenant because he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. 
prove me now herewith. Yes. I will open you the windows of heaven. I will pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. But this is the one that I love. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. We live in a time when the devourer is all around and we have to stand on our tithing covenant. The enemy shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your vine shall not cast her fruit before the time in the field. All nations shall call you blessed. You shall be a delightsome land. Everybody will know that you are blessed to the Lord. Somebody just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. When you pull up in your house today, wherever you are, even if it's an apartment, just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I may not, I may be in this apartment today, but I'm blessed. I'm coming out. Somebody say, man, I'm going to, I'm God's going to help me. Somebody say help. God's going to bless you. I love, you know, that scripture my wife just read, but I love Mark 4, 26, where Jesus said the kingdom of God is as a man that casts seed in the ground. Seed in the ground. You know, some lady told me this morning. I'm not going to point her out, oh. but she said that, Pastor, I plant seed in the ground, and my garden just came up, and I harvest my first crop out of my garden. Oh, that was so good. If you want to harvest, you got to plant seed. She, I asked her, what kind of greens you have? She said, I got collard greens. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, you you, you got to know you got to love collard greens. Somebody say amen. Jesus said, a man should cast seed in the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring up. But here's what he said. He know not how. He knows not how. When you give to God, it's supernatural. I can't tell you how it's going to come back to you. But my Bible says, cast the water on, your bread on the water and it will come back to you. You give to the Lord and it'll come back to you. I can't tell you that it's going to come back money. It may not come back in the million dollar miracle, but it might come back and all your loved ones getting saved. It might come back with a new job. It might come back with that daughter that's always acting up that God turned her life around. It might come back with that son that don't always want to do things the way it needs to be done. Harvest is coming. Somebody say, my harvest is coming. My harvest is coming. Honey, she made me want to plant a garden. You would help me, wouldn't you? Sure. <laughs> Lord, forgive my wife. I know that she didn't tell me the truth. <laughs> she ain't going to help me plant no garden. That is not my gift. <laughs> she won't even cut the grass. So she just come out and look at me. Oh, it looks good. <laughs> when you give to God, it's a seed you sow. And I, again, I just want to say thank you. Would you stand up and let, let us pray over you? God's going to supernatural. Go ahead. Did you have something to say? No, I was going to say they didn't do the envelopes yet. Oh, uh, ushers, come forward. If you need an envelope, uh, if you need an envelope, come on. Give the ushers, give every, everybody an envelope. Everybody give something for the harvest. Everybody give something. Borrow some money from the person next to you. Borrow some money. Borrow some money. Borrow one of them $100 bills. Borrow one of those $50 bills. Borrow some money from them and say, I'll give it back to you. But you got to have something that goes into the kingdom of God with your name on it, with your children's name on it. Put all your kids on the back of the envelope. Put all your grandkids on the back of the envelope. Why? It works. It works. If you need an envelope, the ushers will help you. And God says, I'll bless you a thousand times more. You can give by debit card. Excuse me. You can give by credit card. You can give by by. Uh, text giving you can give by mailing it in or you can give by dropping it off at church however you want to give but i want to just let you know that it's a seed you sow for god to manifest his blessings in your life somebody say amen and god will help you he says i'll not share the glory i'll not share vengeance and i'll not share the tithe, but i'll bless your life somebody say i'm blessed if you know the lord has blessed you just Say with me, I'm blessed. If you know the Lord has been good to you, just say it with me. I'm blessed. You might be going through some battles. You might be fighting some devils. But that's a part of our, our faith. We got to fight off, war off, demonic forces. Jesus said, the thief coming not but for to what? Steal and to what? Kill and to what? 
destroy, but I have come that you might have what? Life and have it what? More abundantly. And he says in Matthew 5, 45, it rains on the just and the unjust. When things, unfortunate things happen in your life, don't get depressed. Don't get down and out. Don't get mad at anybody. Don't turn on your loved ones. That's just a part of the rain. Get out your prayer umbrella. Get out your tithing umbrella. And just say, Lord, catch the rain. Somebody say amen. Nothing is like walking under a big umbrella and it's raining, pouring down rain. Oh, you're covered. Somebody say amen. I was coming out of Walmart one day and a lady was, an old lady was coming in with a, uh, uh, going in and it was pouring down rain. So I took my umbrella and went over and walked alongside of her. Somebody, she said, oh, thank you, Sonny. They called me Sonny. I should have let you walk in the rain. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Thank you for allowing me to pastor you. I have one goal, two goals. I want to get my family to the other side and I want to get you to the other side. Those are the two goals I have. I want your family to be blessed. So oftentimes, the Lord puts you on my heart. And if I will call you when the Lord puts you on my heart, man, you'll be saying, Pastor, why are you calling me? Well, the Lord puts you on my heart. I carry you in my heart. Carry you in my spirit. You're my number one assignment. When you give to the Lord, he's going to give it back to you. Stretch your elbow all the way up and everybody say with me, say, Lord, I give it to your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, I declare your blessing over my life. Thank you. I'll never be broke another day in my life. I live under the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am blessed say it again i am blessed thank you for the anointing of financial breakthrough say it again thank you for the anointing of financial breakthrough one more time thank you for the anointing of financial breakthrough may it manifest in my life in jesus name i pray somebody say amen god bless you if you're giving come and lay it on the altar god is a good god he loves you and everything is going to be all right. God loves you and be strong and of a good courage. Would you welcome Pastor Kyle as you bring your offering to the offer, altar? Would you welcome Pastor Kyle as he pronounced a blessing over our lives on this day? Praise God. Let people keep worshiping in their giving. <laughs> Spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee, and the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And they shall put my name upon the children of Emmanuel, and I will bless them. Heavenly Father, eternal God, we are so grateful for this time today. Thank you, Lord God, for the message. Thank you, Lord God, for the messenger. Father, we thank you for your word. May your word flow freely in our lives, Lord God, as we commit our memory to your word. 
as we commit to memorizing your word, reading your word, spending time in your word, basking in your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just meet us, Lord God, that you would fill us with your presence and that we would have encounters with you when we are reading your word. Father, speak to us clearly with precision and accuracy, Lord God. Encourage our soul, Lord God. Give us a hope to an expected end, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the power that is in your word. We speak word, your word, Lord God, to our adversaries. We speak word, Lord God, your word over our children. We speak your word over our lives, over our homes. We speak your word, Lord God. Help us to stand in your word, Lord God. Equip us with your word. And we love you today. Now, Father, bless the people, Lord God, as we lead today, Lord God. Guard them and keep them. And we pray the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us until we meet again. We love you and we praise you. And we always will in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Stir it up, stir it up. 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 Stir it up, stir it up.